Hello everyone, I appreciate you all checking out this video and I hope you all are doing wonderful. If you're playing Yakuza like a dragon and running into issues with not having enough money, whether it be for upgrading your weapons at the romance workshop, or taking the personality boosting exams at the Iwana Bar Vocational School, or maybe just to pay for the somewhat pricey taxis to get around faster, then you're in the right place for finding a solution. This video will be going over the four most effective ways to farm money in the game. So get ready, strap in, take notes, and you will learn the tricks to earning endless yen in Yaksa Like a Dragon. As always, if you enjoy this video, I would be forever grateful for a like on the video and a subscription to the channel. Alright, let's get into the video. As already mentioned, there are effectively four main ways to farm money. Technically, there are also a few lucrative part-time hero quests that give a decent amount of money, those being the Robson and Kappa's missions, but they are not going to be included in this video because they are not farmable as they are not repeatable, and because by the time they can be completed there are better alternatives. However, if you are interested in those, I will be making videos on them soon. Refocusing on the top 4 effective money farms, each one can serve a purpose beyond just how much yen they provide. For example, how early can they be accessed? How much time needs to be invested in order to get monetary returns? How hard are they to take on? Do they have extra rewards? Therefore, I will not be listing these in any order of best to worst, rather they will be in order of how early you can access them, and the optimal way to use them would be in combination together when it is appropriate. Also, something that might be useful to know, considering how much money you will be making, is that there is an ATM system in the game where you can deposit funds in order to store it and prevent it from being lost when you die. So, make sure to take advantage of this system and deposit your money whenever you do not need it on hand. Starting off with method number one, the vending machines. These are often overlooked as just some extra feature in the game, but if used correctly, they can be rather profitable. Vending machines become accessible as early as chapter three, and their value is in the ability to search under them for either yen or plates. This game being as eccentric as it is means that what you really want to pull from under the vending machine are surprisingly plates, not yen. This is because the jackpot reward is the platinum plate, which is worth 200,000 yen. There are also gold plates, which are worth 100,000 yen apiece, then the silver plates for 10,000 yen, then bronze plates for 1,000 yen. There are also iron plates for 100 yen and paper plates for 10 yen, but instead of these, it would be better to just get yen from under the vending machines as you can earn up to 500 yen directly. The proper way to utilize the vending machines to earn money is to just play the game normally, but keep a keen eye out for vending machines as you wander through the world and try to always search under them. When done this way, your money and plates will build up, and when you need money, you can cash them in, and you will be glad you took the extra moment after, let's say, some battle on the street, to search the nearby vending machines on the sidewalk. Now, be aware that in order to sell the plates for money, you will need to unlock the pawn shop by completing substory 4, One Man's Trash, which should be available during Chapter 3, and can be started by going to Misaki Street in Ijinsho, and walking past the pile of trash pouring out into the street from the front of the pawn shop. To summarize this method by stating its positives and negatives, it has the upsides of being available very early, the ability to serve as an almost passive source of income, and providing a decent amount of money with relation to how much time is required to earn it. But it also has the downsides of being entirely RNG based. There is not a method that is both quick and simple to refresh the vending machines to allow them to be searched under again, making them somewhat difficult to farm. And in the grand scheme of the game, the money provided by this method is not enough for late game requirements. I want to mention two final notes about this method that are entirely based on my own experience with the game, so I cannot verify them as fact, but they seem to work for me. The first being, you seem to get better RNG the further you are in the game, and specifically when searching under vending machines in Sotenbori and Komorosho. This meaning, you get platinum and gold plates much more often. And second, the vending machines seem to refresh by doing one of three things. Those being first, by progressing through the story, Second, by just playtime in general, for example, after two hours of playtime, the vending machines might refresh. And third, by searching under every or close to every vending machine in whichever city you are in, and then taking a taxi to somewhere in the same city, and upon getting out, the vending machines typically refresh. Method 
Next is probably the most popular method to earn money in Yakuza Like a Dragon, that being the business management minigame. In fact, it is the method that I used to make most of the money I used in the late game. Now, I've seen many people who try to explain this minigame, and they go into all the details of it, which make it seem more complicated than it is. And also, most of those details are not really necessary to know in order to get the same result. Thus, I am going to try and keep this explanation of it simple and easy, and only focus on the parts that matter most. Alright, so you unlock the business management minigame automatically by playing through this story, as it begins as a part of the mandatory substory 15, Ichincho Safety Net. After doing the tutorial for the minigame during substory 15, you can continue managing the business by going to Ichiban Confections, which is located at the southern tip of the bar district in Ichincho. In simplest terms, your goal is to make the business reach rank 1, and in return, you will be rewarded with 3 million yen every few minutes. That sounds great, right? Well, let's get into how to make that happen. The main three elements of the minigame are properties, employees, and board meetings. Starting with properties, these are essentially companies that you buy who in return provide you with money. However, the money they earn goes into your business account, which is kept separate from your personal funds, meaning that the money they earn cannot be used to purchase things outside of the minigame. The purpose of the money they earn you is that it increases your business ranking, which once again is what we want because this is how we earn money for our personal funds down the road. Each property has its own costs and revenue, but do not worry about that as I will provide you with a list of the best properties. Each property also has a product, service, and notability goal that if you meet, the business will operate better and earn more money. You meet these goals by assigning employees with the appropriate product, service, and notability stats. Employees have rarity as well, but the higher the rarity, the greater their stats. Their stats can be increased by leveling them up, but there are level caps, and in order to increase their level cap, you need to promote them up to a maximum level cap of 30. Employees also have an emotion level, which is indicated by an emoji in the bottom left of their character cards. You want to keep their emotion levels at green, which is the highest, because this will maximize their productivity. To increase their emotion levels, you need to provide them with bonuses by either manually clicking each employee and paying for their bonuses, or you can press the Auto Care button shown in the bottom right of your employees page to give everyone bonuses all at once. But do note that this costs more than doing each person individually. If you have all of the employees' emotion levels at green, then you only need to give them bonuses every other quarter. Now, a quarter passes every time you click Open for Business and you run through the performance of your businesses. There are four quarters in a period, and at the end of a period, you will go to a board meeting, which is essentially its own mini game, where you take four employees to fight a number of board members. The board meeting is where the other stats on the employees come into play, with Charisma being their attack, Tenacity being their HP, this stat doesn't matter much, and Command Cost being how much energy it takes for them to attack. The way the combat works is a system very similar to rock, paper, scissors, where each board member and each employee have what I call elements in the top left of their character cards, ranging from red to blue to green. The system works with red beating green, green beating blue, and blue beating red. The easiest way to memorize it for me is with red being fire, green being grass, and blue being water, so then fire beats grass, grass beats water, and water beats fire. Memorization will be vital because all of this battle is timed and requires somewhat quick reactions. In order to quote unquote win the board meeting, you need to finish the meeting with at least a 50% support rating, which can be seen on the bottom left of the screen when fighting the board members, or finish all of the board members off. To beat each board member, simply fully deplete their HP bar by exploiting their elemental weaknesses. Sometimes board members will have a shield come up when you attack them which can also be exploited by its elemental weakness according to the color of the shield. Each time you attack with one of your employees, it will take energy away from your energy bar located at the center of the bottom of the screen according to the command cost of the employee who attacked. If an employee's command cost exceeds your current energy, then they will not be able to attack. The energy does regenerate over time, but remember the entire meeting has a time limit. Moreover, as the board meeting goes on, there will be a meter in the bottom right of the screen, which, when filled, can be activated to have Kasuga apologize and clutch up in a board meeting. However, if you follow my strategy, you should be able to quickly knock out 
all of the board members every time and reads through board meetings. This can be accomplished by setting up your board meeting team with employees that have the lowest command cost with as high charisma as possible. Since there are four slots in the board meeting team, you should have three slots be employees with low command cost and high charisma, each with a different element. Then have the final slot be someone with as high as charisma as possible of any element of your choice. With this setup, you simply look at the element of the board member you're going to attack and determine his weakness and put that in mind. And then, if they have a shield, ignore the color as you can just spam your lowest command cost employee to get rid of the shield, which in the worst case scenario will only require three hits. Then either use your employee that can exploit the board member's weakness, or spam your employees with the highest charisma. This strategy should work every time. At the end of the board meeting, your business rank will be updated, and you will potentially earn money if you enter a new business ranking category. However, once you reach rank 1, you will earn 3 million yen every time you complete a board meeting. Now you can see how once you reach business rank 1, this becomes an extremely lucrative way to make money as you can complete a business meeting around once every 7 minutes. The best properties depend on what business ranking category you are currently in, but in order from the earliest you can acquire them, these are the best properties. Mahjong Club Link, Yokoto Bookstore, Mr. Brilio, Ryusei Stage Theater, Cat Servant, Karaoke Gon Gon, Hortensia, White Flag, PDCA Trading Company, Shokichi Camera, Waipu Production, The Grand Blue Marino, Media Barter, and finally Deanthus, which is the most profitable property by a decent margin. Take note that once you reach business rank 50, Ichiban Confections will relocate to a larger building, that being a high rise near Chinatown towards the top right corner of Ichincho. Finishing up with the business management minigame, two quick tips are that, first, anytime an ad campaign event is offered, you should take it as they are essentially always profitable. And second, I would not recommend taking out any loans at any point, as they are not that useful. To summarize this method by stating its positives and negatives, it has the upsides of once you reach business rank 1, it is probably the fastest way to make money in the game without needing a strong party, and it requires very little effort. Furthermore, it is available fairly early in the game. The downsides are that it takes a decent amount of time to reach business rank 1, somewhere in the ballpark of 6 to 10 hours, and the whole process can be boring and monotonous. Finally, there is an extra bonus in the fact that once you break into the top 100 businesses, Aerie will join your party. So if you needed any more motivation to give the business management minigame a try, there you go. Moving on to the third most effective method to farm money in the game, we have the Sotenbori Battle Arena. The Sotenbori Battle Arena becomes accessible once you go to Sotenbori in Chapter 12, and it functions as a dungeon with a few differences. There are 30 floors, and each floor has one battle encounter. You can leave the battle arena at any point by taking the elevator back to the entrance, but your progress is only saved every 5 floors. So if you have not beaten the entire battle arena yet, then you will lose your progress on any floors between every 5 floors if you return to the entrance, but you will always keep your money, XP, and loot. When you return to the battle arena, you can resume from any 5th floor you have completed, the possibilities being the 1st floor, the 6th floor, the 11th floor, the 16th floor, the 21st floor, or the 26th floor. You do not heal or receive mana between floors but there is a storage crate before the battle on each floor where you can access all of your restorative items. Each floor also has a one-time reward for completing the floor the first time, and then a repeatable reward that can be earned by winning the battle while also meeting some other condition. These conditions range from winning within a certain amount of turns to winning without using any recovery skills. Furthermore, the rewards are high quality as they include some of the best and rarest weapons, armor, and upgrade materials in the game. For example, you can get the Dragon Soul Bat as a one-time reward, the entire Dragon Armor set repeatedly, and essentially all of the rare materials needed for weapon upgrades as many times as you want. Additionally, the Sotenbori Battle Arena is a pretty good XP farm, as all of the enemies here seem to give boosted experience. Now, getting into the money side of this method, each battle encounter you win will reward you with money. 
ranging from 20,000 yen on the first floor to 1 million yen on the 30th floor. These amounts can be increased even farther by using the pound mate Megumi, whom can be earned by completing substory 23, Warmest Wishes, which becomes available by chapter 9. When you use Megumi, she will ensure that you earn more money from the battle. So for example, if she is used on floor 30, you will earn close to 5 million yen instead of the usual 1 million, and she only costs 20,000 yen to summon. At the end of the battle, it would say that you earned 0 yen, but that is because when you use Megumi, you earn the money right after her cinematic cutscene ends. Keep in mind that she has a cooldown after being used, which requires you to complete 3 battles before she can be used again. My recommendation to optimize this money farming method is to complete the Sotenbori battle arena and keep farming through whatever floors you are able to swiftly clear, and then once you are strong enough to easily defeat the top floors, those being floors 26 through 30, you should then start from floor 26 and clear each floor until floor 30, where you should then use Megumi to get close to 5 million yen, then return to the entrance and start again from floor 26, battle through until floor 30, and use Megumi again who should be off cooldown by this point. Rinse and repeat this process and you will be rich in no time. A quick side note about the Sotoboy battle arena is that once you reach chapter 12, you should farm this location regardless of the money farming method, because the bosses of chapter 12 are noticeably tougher than the ones previous to this point in the game, and the sudden jump in difficulty means that most players hit a brick wall, unless they had randomly power leveled right before this point and the battle arena is the best place up through chapter 12 to increase the power of your team. If you want to make this farming process even more rewarding, then you should check out my video on all of the game's XP and job XP boosters by clicking on the info card in the top right of the video, or by clicking the link in the description. To summarize this method by stating its positives and negatives, it has the upside to being perhaps the fastest way to make money in the game. You can acquire XP, job XP, the rarest upgrade materials, and some of the best weapons and armor, while simultaneously farming money. And since you are battling enemies, it is one of the most entertaining methods as well, at least for me. The downsides are that it is not accessible until later in the game, and the method requires a party of decent strength. Alright, well we have reached the final money farming method, and it is fitting, considering that it is the final Millennium Tower. Technically, this is two methods, as there is both the Final Millennium Tower and the true Final Millennium Tower, both of which can be farmed for money. But, they are both in the same building, and they both have the same layout. It is just that one is extremely more difficult than the other. I want to avoid spoiling as much as possible, so I'll keep the details of this method on the superficial level. The tower functions as a dungeon with several floors and five bosses. There are elevators throughout the tower that can be taken in order to leave the tower early and take with you what you have collected. There is loot scattered in various places on each floor, but always in the same position every time you restart the tower. The loot consists of mostly rare materials to upgrade your weapons, but these can be found in the certain boy battle arena as well. The money making comes in by defeating each boss, who at the lowest will provide 5 million yen, and at the highest will provide up to 9 million yen in the final millennium tower, and up to 62 million yen in the true Final Millennium Tower. These values can be further boosted by using Megumi, just as we did in the Sotin Boy Battle Arena. These numbers seem great at first glance, but things change when you take into consideration that these are post-game dungeons, meaning you need to beat the game to access them, and they both require extremely powerful teams to conquer. The Final Millennium Tower requires each of your party members to be fully leveled, along with the job they are using to be fully leveled as well along with the best gear, of course. While the true Final Millennium Tower requires the exact same, except, in addition, you need multiple jobs at maximum rank in order to obtain the permanent stat boost earned by leveling jobs up. Furthermore, simply beating the tower is not enough if you want to optimize this method, as the goal would be to reach the point where you can quickly defeat all of the bosses and then run through the tower again over and over. Moreover, because of the difficulty of the tower, you will need to stay focused for the entire farming process as wasting a turn could mean dying. This stands opposed to the relatively little thinking needed for the other methods. So, in summarizing this method, it has the potential to provide you with the largest monetary returns in the game, along with rare materials, a decent amount of XP, and an entertaining strategic experience. It is brought down by the fact of needing to almost have done everything in the game that these returns would have helped with in order to make the method possible, let alone time effective. 
Of course, you could work around the difficulty and time intenseness of the tower by only beating one or a few of the bosses and then restart the tower via the elevators. So, if you find a setup you like, then go ahead and do that. But when looking through a money farming lens at the tower, I see its purpose being mostly that of a way to buy the most expensive things in the game that were not even necessary in the first place to accomplish everything the game had to offer. Alright, well, that is just about it for this video, but I would like to thank you for watching and invite you to watch me live on Twitch, as I am planning to stream at least three times a week. My Twitch is It's Sky Stew, and I would truly appreciate it if you could go over there by clicking the link in the description and give me a follow. I'm pushing for affiliate and I need about 35 more followers, so every little bit helps. Thanks again, and I wish you all the best of days. Later.